In this section, we're going to create a virtual private cloud the hard way. We're going to build it up from individual components, creating the VPC, the subnets, the routes, and the interconnections that let it talk to the internet. We're going to create a network that spans all of the availability zones in US West 2. We're going to drop public subnets and private subnets in each one of the AZs. Then we're going to create an internet gateway. We're going to create a NAT instance, and we're going to create route tables in the public subnet that sends traffic out the internet gateway and routing tables in the private subnet that sends traffic out the NAT instance. Wait, what's NAT? Well, NAT stands for Network Address Translation, and it's a technology that lets machines inside of a network talk to the internet without having to provide public IP addresses to those machines. In other words, it protects those machines from access from the public internet. We create a NAT server and then send traffic from the internal machines to the NAT server, and the NAT server forwards it to the internet for us. When the response comes back, the NAT server knows who the originating machine was and gives them the traffic. We can do this for any number of machines. As a matter of fact, you do this all the time if you have a broadband connection at home. So the final result of building everything by hand will be a network that looks like this. So let's get started. Here's the management console for AWS. First thing we're gonna do is create hot links to the VPC and EC2 sections since we'll be flipping back and forth to these a lot. Now let's go into the VPC section, and we'll see that there is already one VPC in existence. It's the default VPC. So we're gonna create our own VPC. We're gonna call it Lab VPC, and give it a CIDR block of 10.23.0.0. We're gonna leave tenancy at default. Now tenancy tells the VPC, if we set it other than default, that we want all of our virtual systems to be collected on their own hardware, meaning they won't share tenancy with any other company, and we can guarantee that our stuff is running on the same machine. So we've created the VPC. Now let's create the subnets. We'll create the first public subnet, and let's use a naming convention here that tells us immediately where that subnet is. So we're going to call it PubSub AZA, and we're going to put it in availability zone A. We're also going to use a numbering convention where the network number of the third octet if it's a single digit, that'll be a public subnet. So we've created the first public subnet. Now we'll create the second. Following our naming convention, we'll put this one in availability zone B. The third octet will again be a single digit number. Now each one of these subnets can hold theoretically up to 255 IP addresses. But as we know, IP subnets reserve address 255 for broadcast. Amazon itself reserves the first four IP addresses in a subnet for its own use. So IP addresses 1, 2, 3, and 4 are not available for you to use. So the maximum number of subnets you can put in a slash 24 is actually 251 IP addresses. At this point, there really is no difference between the subnets. The difference comes when we assign routing tables to them. Also, because we tend to have more private subnets than public subnets, we'll use a slightly different naming scheme. In this case, this will be A1, and there'll be B1 and C1. And then as we add more private subnets, we increase that number. You can see also we're using a numbering convention where the third octet has two digits, starting with one. I like to make sure that I use things like naming conventions and numbering conventions so that no matter which piece of information you get about something like a subnet, it's readily apparent as to what kind of subnet it is. If you get the name, it's obvious. That network number tells me immediately that this is going to be a private subnet, so I understand what kind of things I can expect from it. Now that we've finished up all of our subnets, let's create the connection points from our internet gateways to the subnets themselves. So we'll first create an internet gateway. And as you'll see, it's just a construct inside of Amazon Software Defined Network. We have to attach the internet gateway to a VPC for it to be used. Now we'll go into EC2, and we'll start up an EC2 instance that'll serve as our NAT server. All a NAT server is, is a instance or EC2 or any sort of machine generally that understands that when a packet arrives that's outbound for the internet, the software within the machine will rewrite the packet. It'll send the packet out as if it's a packet from that machine, and it'll keep track as to who originated that request. When the response comes back for the packet, the information goes back to the originating system. As you can see, there are multiple instances of the NAT software. We'll pick the latest one. We'll use a T2 micro in this case, but you would want to make sure that you size it appropriately for the traffic that you expect. Make sure that you're putting in the correct VPC. And here you can see how easy it is to pick out the correct subnet based on our naming scheme. 
Also remember to assign a public IP address to the NAT instance or traffic will never go outside. Always make sure you tag things so you can keep track of them. And now we're going to configure the security group. We're going to use the existing security group for the VPC itself. This allows any traffic coming from any machine within the VPC to enter the NAT instance. So we'll review it. Yep, everything looks good. We'll use the key we created before. And we'll launch the instance. So now we've created the Internet Gateway and the NAT instance. So we're ready to start creating our routing tables for our subnets. Hit the hot button back to the VPC. And now we go into the route table section. You can see two route tables already exist, one for each existing VPC. This is the route table for the VPC we just created. And you can see that the route table allows traffic to pass within the VPC to any machine within the VPC, but not outside of the VPC. Whereas the default VPC, it allows any traffic that isn't bound for a machine internal to the network to be sent out to the internet. That's a big difference between the default VPC and the VPCs you'll create because you probably won't want all traffic to go out to the internet. So let's create a public route table. And this is just a construct. A route table is just a holder for routes. So the route initially is the route that reflects the main table or the VPC's own route table. So this would allow traffic to be routed between any machine within the VPC. Since we want a default route to go out to the internet gateway, we create this path saying that anything that's not recognized should go to the internet gateway. Now we'll assign it to the subnets we created. And you can see in this screen, there's a listing of all the subnets that don't have route tables associated with them. They're all associated with the main table. So we choose our public subnets, save it, and now all the public subnets have a routing table that have a default route out to the internet. And by default route, we mean anything that's not inside the VPC will be given to the internet. And now let's create the second route table. We'll give it a name so we understand its contents, private route table NAT. We could create a private route table that isn't connected to the NAT for machines that we don't ever want to talk to the internet. So we'll create the default route, meaning the destination is any destination not recognized. And we'll start typing in the identity for the NAT instance and it pops up. We choose that, save it, and then pick the subnets we want to associate with the new route table. You can see the public subnets already have their association with the public route table. We'll pick the private ones, save. Now we're done. All the subnets have their own routing tables associated with them. So you can see that we've created the lab VPC. We created all the subnets for the VPC, one private, one public in every availability zone. And we created the internet gateway, allowing traffic into and out of the VPC. And this is our final result. We created this by hand. Thanks for watching this O'Reilly training video. If you'd like more information on this topic, click on Learn More. Please don't forget to subscribe to the O'Reilly Video Training YouTube channel for more tutorials. And be sure to like us on Facebook.